Now, as for our next speaker, he is a young Swiss entrepreneur and he founded Relay and CCFE. And he will speak about the access to Bitcoin and crypto. Please give a warm welcome to Julian Liniger. Hey. <laughs> All right. Hallo zusammen. Nehmt ruhig Platz, kommt alle rein. Draußen ist es eh langweilig. Wie mache ich das am besten? Hier so, next. Ja, yeah, super. Cool. Ja, ich begrüße euch zu diesem kleinen Referat. Mache ich das in Deutsch oder Englisch, by the way? English would be better, right? Okay. So, hello everyone. Um, I was asked to speak about uh, the access to Bitcoin. Uh, in, from the perspective of different investor profiles. Now, obviously, you, the first question we should maybe uh, put out of the room is, who's this young guy and what is he doing on stage? Um, because, you know, uh, I, for some people I look very young, even, you know, below 20. There are incidents where I need to show my ID to buy beer still. So, uh, <laughs> quick background on myself. My name is Julian Liniger, as uh, has been already said. I'm a young uh, entrepreneur from Switzerland. I'm actually 29 years old. I turned 30 uh, in, in uh, December, in two months. So. Um, uh, I have some uh, experience. I did my master's in business administration, not here at this fancy business school, uh, but back in Switzerland at the University of Bern, which is also nice. Um, and I'm into Bitcoin since 2015, so I've uh, seen a couple of bull and bear markets, and I was just fascinated about it from, from the first incident when I uh, have had a friend telling me about it, uh, that there's some magic internet money that doesn't require banks to work. I thought it was fascinating, and since then I am uh, basically into it. And I founded three companies already. One of them is CCFE, as said, Certified Crypto Finance Expert, where we educate the bankers of tomorrow in Switzerland. We do this very successfully since uh, two years, and now we are moving uh, to Germany as well with it. So in March, there will be the first uh, course here in Germany at Frankfurt Business School, um, where we also educate the bankers here in Germany about crypto finance. Bravis, we basically uh, also educate, but also consult and advise bankers on uh, crypto finance. And Relay is Europe's easiest Bitcoin app made in Switzerland, you basically can download the app and within one minute you can buy your first Bitcoin directly into your uh, self-custody. That was it, almost, about uh, kind of marketing. So we also have a booth uh, out there and Rino Borini, my co-founder, is also upstairs if you want to meet us. Also, Julia, um, who is managing the whole course, please uh, meet us there. We also have some interesting discounts to give you. Now, this was it about um, the whole marketing and advertising part. You're all here to buy Bitcoin, right? So let's just do it. You don't need to listen to me here talking about this 20 minutes, how to get access. We can just buy Bitcoin. So you can all take your phone out of your pocket, you can download Relay, and you can buy Bitcoin. That was it. Now, actually, we probably need another one or two minutes. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, this is the first or the, the main uh, mistake everyone is doing. I observed this for seven years now. Everyone who is finding out about Bitcoin is, oh, how can I buy? How can I, I, I want to buy now? It's too late. It's already so, uh, it, it's already 20K, 60K, whatever. I need to buy now. Or when it goes down, everyone wants to sell. Oh, I need to get out of this. But what about first trying to understand this? Because you should, it's, it's Warren Buffett that said you should not invest in anything you don't understand. And one of the big problems that I think we have as an industry, the crypto finance industry, is that everyone is coming in and trying, tries to get rich quick. And I'm not talking about only the small, uh, you know, normal retail investors out there in the streets, the hairdressers, the taxi drivers, the normal people. No, it's actually also the big guys. It's also the venture capitalists, the banks that are raising billions just to get into uh, the crypto market and get rich quick. But it's not about that. It's also what we have seen in the uh, panel before. It's about this technology that has the potential to disrupt the financial industry. And yes, you want to be part of it. And yes, you want to invest. Of course, we all want to invest in this future. But first, we need to understand it. 
So before I'm going to talk about how to access Bitcoin from different investor profiles point of view, uh, I would quickly uh, take five minutes to uh, talk about why should we even invest in Bitcoin. Bottom line up front, I think our financial system is fucked, it's wrecked. Um, there is so much inflation, there is uh, intransparent banking fees, there are negative interest, there have been negative interest rates, it's very low interest rates now. So we have an 8% inflation, this was the 40-year uh, high, so last time it was so high, it was beginning of uh, uh, the 80s, but there was one key difference, that the interest rates were also way higher then. The interest rates were actually higher than the inflation. Then saving makes sense. You can put some money on your savings account and you get a return. Now you have a net negative return of a couple of percent. So at an 8% inflation without any significant interest rates, basically uh, in a couple of decades, you're just, you're just uh, half your, your, your purchasing power. So saving is not an option anymore. People cannot just earn money and save it on their savings account. They lose purchasing power every year. And this is for the biggest part of uh, the world. In Europe, it's already, uh, it's already close to 10% in the US as well. In many other markets, Asia, South America, it's even way higher. There's uh, several, some, sometimes up to 100% of inflation. So you're losing money every day, basically. Your savings are melting away. Now, why so many people are turning to Bitcoin in the last 10 to 12 years since it exists is because it is the best store of value technology that we have ever invented as human beings. How do we define um, a good store of value is basically by taking uh, a couple of indicators, like how durable it is over time, how divisible it is, how small you can put it into small pieces and also to big pieces again, how fungible it is, how portable it is, how easy can you send money from here to Senegal, for example. Um, how verifiable it is, how easy it is to verify, how scarce it is. Do you know any asset that is provably scarce? Like has a limited, not only a limited, but a fixed supply? There's none. Even gold. You don't know, maybe there is some more gold somewhere in Uganda. Maybe there is some more gold on Mars. You don't know. Bitcoin, you know, there's 21 million. There's never going to be more. And what's the track record? Now, uh, if you take the main savings technologies that we had so far, which originally was gold, and then also fiat currencies, and now we have also Bitcoin for 10 years. If you take these and compare it, then you come to the conclusion, just rationally, no emotions here, just rationally, you come to the conclusion that Bitcoin is qualifying as the best store of value that we have ever seen. Um, and that's not only my opinion, that's the opinion of Fidelity Digital Assets. Fidelity is one of the oldest uh, US-based financial institutions in the world. Bitcoin doesn't require any central bank, any government, and it has a clear schedule uh, of um, making, creating new blocks and issuing uh, new coins. So there is inflation, but it is... Uh, developing def uh, deflationary manner. So every four years there's a halving and there's less Bitcoin issued. It started in 2009 with um, 50 Bitcoins per 10 minutes. And now every four years this is getting halved. It was 25 Bitcoin, then 12 and a half Bitcoin. And right now it's 6.25 Bitcoin issued every 10 minutes. And this will go on until 2000. 141, and there will be no Bitcoin that will be issued anymore. So this is something I and my generation, the millennials, trust. We don't trust central banks that say at the beginning of the year, yes, we will keep inflation at 2%, and now it's at fucking 8% half a year later. We don't trust that, but we do, we do trust this uh, technology. And that's why in my opinion, that we had above average performance. Bitcoin is the best performing asset in the world in the last decade. 
There's nothing that even came close to it, even if it's in, even in the beer market right now. Um, gold, the S&P 500, so stocks, ETFs, whatever um, kind of normal investors are looking for, for their 10 to 15% annual returns, there's nothing that even came close uh, to Bitcoin on a long scale already. It's not only one or two years of data, it's 12 years of data. So that's why all the investors want to invest in Bitcoin. Not only retail investors, but also institutional investors. Retail investors, this is one um, survey that has been done with investors that already are in the market. Like they do invest in stocks, bonds, real estate, whatever. And they were asked, how uh, likely are you to invest in Bitcoin? Or how, how much do you like Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies as an investment, uh, as an asset class? And it's actually already uh, very high in popularity. So it's the fourth most uh, liked um, or most sought after asset compared to all the other traditional assets as well. Um, and what's funny is that it is a generational thing, right? So the older generations, uh, like the baby boomers and, and you know, people above 40 and 50, are way less uh, likely to invest in Bitcoin than the younger generations, the millennials like myself, or the even younger ones, the Gen Z that are up to 20 years old, almost half of them already say they do own or they will own Bitcoin in the future. And that's very, it's, it's logical, right? It's, it's no offense to anyone, but the older people just don't get the new technologies. That's, that's just how the world um, works. And this was the same with uh, in the internet. I mean, my, my parents hardly did get the internet, but now obviously they don't get this new uh, technology. But the younger generations, the millennials and the Gen Z, are the ones who are already the biggest consumer group now, and they will be the biggest investor group in the next 10 to 20 years. So for bankers and investment advisors, this is super important to, to understand, that these people, they will control the majority of the money in the next 10 to 20 years. And guess what? They will invest a lot of it in Bitcoin. So you need to be ready. And also institutional investors. Uh, you, you hopefully, uh, you have heard about this, that BlackRock, the biggest uh, asset manager in the world with uh, north of 10 trillion uh, US dollar asset under management, is now offering through several products, um, like trusts and soon an ETF, um, and other ETPs and direct, and they have a, a, a collaboration with Coinbase, the biggest exchange in the world. They are offering their institutional clients uh, access to Bitcoin. So it's not going to go away. It, the adoption is going further and further, even though we're still very early. So measured at the users, uh, if you compare to the internet, uh, the internet had 300 million users in 1998. This was before the big bubble. This was before Amazon or Facebook uh, or Google has been founded. So 1998, uh, 300 million users of the internet. A lot of people still thought it's going to go away. We were kind of in a similar situation as right now. Right now we have 300 million crypto users, around plus 100 million Bitcoin users. So we are still super early, but the adoption is moving at a very fast pace. And just fun fact, Bitcoin is already quite big. If you compare it to market capitalization of companies, it would already be in the top 10 right now. So that's why. And now the actual question I was asked to um, answer is how can different investors um, get, get to Bitcoin? Let's start at the bottom left. So for me, it all depends. It, I mean, the, the answer to this question is it depends, right? <laughs> it depends what kind of investor you are. If you are a retail investor, it's like a normal, peop, normal person uh, working you know, as a taxi driver or out there serving us drinks or whatever, retail investor, small amount of money, um, and they want to have their own uh, maybe they want to have um, their own custody, so they want to control the money. Then it's basically in the, in the uh, lower left side where you use something like Relay. 
Relay is, as said, a very easy application, smartphone application. You can download it. You have your own non-custodial wallet. That means you hold the private keys. And you can start from 10 bucks already. So you don't have to buy a whole Bitcoin. You can just invest 10 or 20 Swiss francs or euro. You can send it via a bank transfer or a credit card. And then you can get Bitcoin into your wallet. So you basically have a bank account, a Swiss bank account in your uh, own pocket. And you don't even have to open an account or do KYC, AML verification, nothing. It's super easy. Um, and so this is how kind of maybe a friend of yours or whatever, a retail investor would invest in Bitcoin if he or she wants to actually own the coins. Now, there are other retail investors that might say, oh, I don't care who actually holds the coins. I don't want to bother with these 12 words or private keys or whatever. I just want to make it um, uh, simple and someone else should take care of it then these retail investors are probably better off with something like Coinbase, which is custodial. That means that Coinbase does hold the money on behalf of the customer, like a bank. So we were used to it that we don't actually hold our own money. We do maybe if we have a $10 uh, uh, bill, so a banknote, um, cash. But for all the digital money, we always had um, banks to, to hold it for us, right? And they could also freeze us, they could block transactions, whatever. Same problem you have if you do it with Coinbase. You have your Bitcoin there, but you don't actually own them, they own them on your behalf, they hold them on your behalf. But it has some advantages, like you don't have to take care of it if you lose your password or if you lose your phone, you can just call Coinbase, they will give you a new password and then that's it, right? Which with Relay, you have a problem if you have lost your password to your private key, your seed phrase, and you lose your phone, for example, well, then you have a problem because no one, not even Relay, can access it. With Coinbase, that's better. Now, if we go to the institution side, there's also these both sides. Some institutions that have to or want to give custody to someone else. For example, then we are in this uh, on the top right with uh, something like 21 shares. The, they issue, they are one of the biggest, at least in Switzerland, one of the biggest issuer of ETPs, exchange traded products, certificates, uh, or, or even funds or whatever. You basically get a, a certification, a paper, an IOU saying you own uh, X, Y, Z amount of Bitcoin. And it's custodial, so someone else obviously holds it that is specialized um, on holding digital assets. You as an institution then don't hold it, uh, but that's something that's very normal also with traditional assets like, uh, like uh, stocks um, and, and uh, real estate funds or whatever. Um, then you're in the institution and custodial side. There's also a non-custodial side for institutions, so if you want to be the custody, the custodian of your own assets or the assets of your customer as a bank, for example, uh, then there are uh, players like, for example, crypto finance also in Switzerland, uh, they're also here, by the way, that can set you up with the technology and the legal frameworks and everything so that you actually hold the private keys, you hold the, the assets on behalf of your customers. There's pros and cons to all of this. So there's direct investment opportunities where you as an investor hold uh, the assets and there's indirect ones where uh, someone else holds the assets on your behalf. And it's not good or bad. Like not one thing is better than the other, one provider is better than the other. It's really about what, what you want. You now have the choice. You never had the choice um, for the longest time. You had to work with a bank to hold your assets. Now with Bitcoin, you do have a choice. Whether you're a retail or an institutional investor, you now have the choice, do I want to hold my own money or not? And it maybe depends on how big um, the amount is. For example, myself, if I have just a savings plan running with Relay, uh, we had a, in, the, in the other um, panel, there was this discussion about DCA, dollar cost averaging, let's say 100 bucks per week or month. 
it's just running with Relay. I get it uh, to, my, to my Bitcoin wallet and it's a couple of K. Well, I'm happy to hold this myself. I want to hold this myself. Maybe if I make uh, 10 million uh, Swiss francs by selling a company or whatever, I probably will put the majority of it in Bitcoin, but I probably don't want to hold it myself. Then I might go with something like uh, 21 shares or whatever, to, or, or a bank that is set up with crypto finance to hold on to my Bitcoin because you know, I, I would be too much of a target and, and my security, my personal security is probably not at the highest standard. So I want to have a partner for this. So it really depends on, uh, uh, on your situation as an investor. But these are the main uh, alternatives that you have now with Bitcoin. Julian, you yes. have to come to an end. Are there any questions? <laughs> oh, okay, nice. This was the end. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. We have a booth uh, outside if you want to uh, keep on talking. Thank you. Thank you, Julian. <laughs>